Hello, History 362. So today we're going to be talking about the end of the Ptolemaic dynasty, um, the sad end as the last big Hellenistic kingdom standing, and arguably the most powerful of the Hellenistic kingdoms in the early 3rd century BC, um, is now reduced to uh, a, a sad and pathetic dynastic uh, dysfunction. Um, uh, and really relying on the friendship and tolerance of Rome, the Roman Republic, for its survival. Um, so um, uh, Ptolemy VI, uh, the death of, of Ptolemy V in 180 BC, uh, sees a uh, six-year-old child, Ptolemy VI, come to power, um, uh, who is uh, guided in a regency by his mother, Cleopatra I, the, the Syrian, the daughter of Antiochus the Great. Um, and as we've seen, one of the main causes of the Sixth uh, Syrian War uh, was uh, as the uh, brothers come of age, Ptolemy VI and his brother Ptolemy VIII, as they come up to age, they start to fight over the kingdom. And uh, this fraternal strife enables the interventions of Antiochus IV in 169 and 168, um, uh, and, and briefly makes it look even that Antiochus IV could conquer the entire kingdom until the famous uh, so-called Day at Eleusis. Eleusis is just outside of Pelusium, so that, that incident is sometimes called the Day at Eleusis, uh, where the Roman ambassador Papilius Linus draws the circle in the sand and sends Antiochus IV packing. Um, now, for the next five years, really, um, there is going to be a power-sharing arrangement between Ptolemy VI, his brother Ptolemy VIII, and also their sister, Cleopatra II. Um, but in uh, 164, uh, Ptolemy VI is expelled by his brother Ptolemy VIII, um, who is then expelled in turn. Um, again, it seems here with a little bit of an, well, with an intervention by Rome. So uh, uh, Ptolemy, the, the basically a, a new power sharing arrangement is effected by 163, whereby Ptolemy VIII will rule Cyrene, and Ptolemy VI will be the king in Alexandria. Um, so again, that, that power-sharing arrangement uh, basically works. Um, Ptolemy VI uh, uh, actually is, proves to be one of the more energetic of the Ptolemaic kings militarily, uh, intervening up in Syria, now himself turning the tables, briefly crowned as king of the Seleucid Empire, um, uh, probably around 145. BC before his death in battle uh, in 145, uh, uh, just outside of Antioch. Um, so with the death of Ptolemy VI, um, he has a son, Ptolemy VII, and that poor kid doesn't last very long. Ptolemy VIII takes power over the entirety of the kingdom. And Ptolemy VIII is sometimes, known, well, his, his nickname, not a very flattering nickname, is Ptolemy VIII Fuscon, Ptolemy VIII the Potbellied. Um, he rules uh, jointly with his sister wife, Cleopatra II, um, until he decides that he's going to marry um, his niece, uh, the, the daughter of his sister wife, although not his daughter from a previous marriage. Um, uh, he's going to marry his niece, Cleopatra III. Um, and uh, this leads to a civil war with his sister, um, starting in 132 and ending in, uh, now not ending until around 126. Um, and this civil war, we're told, devastates Egypt um, uh, and, and badly weakens the entire kingdom. Uh, finally, in 126, there is a reconciliation. And so the, uh, the three of them, Cleopatra II, Cleopatra III, and Ptolemy VIII Fuscon, basically agree to another power sharing arrangement. They will rule together. Um, and they do so down to the death of Fuscon in, um, uh, excuse me, the, the death of, of Fuscon in uh, 116 uh, BC. Um, now, at this point, the uh, Cleopatra III, uh, who's still alive, um, kind of uh, proves the power broker. Um, she has two sons, Ptolemy the Ninth and Ptolemy the Tenth. Um, uh, and uh, Ptolemy the Ninth, the older one, initially rules from 116 down to 107. Um, and at, at this point, uh, Cleopatra III decides, eh, she's done with this kid. Um, and so she has him uh, exiled and uh, allows her, other, her, her younger son, Ptolemy the Tenth, to rule. Um, 
although uh, he, he may have her murdered around 101 BC. Um, so Ptolemy X rules down to 88 BC, at which point his brother uh, returns and manages to eject him. Uh, so now Ptolemy IX is back. Uh, Ptolemy X um, tries to go out and raise forces, but is defeated and, and killed in battle. Um, so now Ptolemy IX is back, having, having, def having defeated his brother Ptolemy X, and he will rule down to 80 BC upon his death. Um, now there's a problem. He doesn't have an heir. So the, a son of Ptolemy X, the late Ptolemy X, is found, Ptolemy XI, um, and Ptolemy XI lasts a very, very short period of time um, before he is, uh, before he is uh, killed. Um, he's not considered a suitable king. So he's assassinated. Um, and uh, now the, the, the Ptolemies are actually got a problem. They, so far, you know, if you've kind of been following this convoluted story, th there's really been a problem of too many kings, uh, uh, too many kings or too many queens, uh, struggles between particularly siblings for power. And now all of a sudden we've got a problem in 80 uh, BC of uh, not enough legitimate kings. And so two bastard sons of Ptolemy the Ninth are scrounged up. Um, one becomes, uh, one is given uh, Cyprus to rule, he sometimes, is, so his name is Ptolemy. Um, the other becomes the king in Alexandra, and he's referred to as Ptolemy the Twelfth. Um, supposedly he liked to play the flute, um, so he's known as Ptolemy the Twelfth Aletes, uh, the flute player, after the aulos, which is a, a type of uh, sort of double-barreled uh, flute, very popular in Greece. Um, um, uh, he therefore rules from 80, until 58 when he is expelled from the kingdom. Essentially, the powers that be in the court, uh, the, the factions in Alexandria um, uh, decide they've had enough with him, uh, uh, and so he, they, they expel him. Um, and in that year, the Romans decide to take advantage of the situation by annexing Cyprus. The other brother, Ptolemy, who'd been on Cyprus, kills himself. Um, so now the Romans are decide, we're just gonna take this you know, wealthy, uh, mineral-rich um, island for ourselves. Um, Aletes goes to Rome, where he stays in the house of the Roman general Pompey, and he basically keeps saying, will you restore my kingdom to me? Will you give me an army and restore my kingdom to me? And, and the Romans aren't actually, eh, they're not all that interested. They're, 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 the, the government in Alexandria is now run by his daughter, um, who, again, is at this point a placeholder figure. And the, the Romans really, they're, they're, they're fine with the situation. Um, finally, Ptolemy the Twelfth Aletes um, bribes the Roman governor of Syria, Aulus Gabinius, in 55, supposedly pays him a huge sum, 10,000 talents, although that may be a rumor. Um, and Aulus Gabinius provides with the troops and resources for Ptolemy the Twelfth to return in 55 and reclaim his throne. Um, and then he rules until his death in, 80, uh, sorry, in 51 BC. Um, so again, a, a, a situation where you know the weak king uh, here, at kind of at the mercy of the whims of not just Rome as a unified government, but in this instance, various Roman uh, uh, figures abroad. And of course, this is the late Roman Republic. Things are not the, the Roman Republic is in actually in a pretty bad shape, um, and we actually do see um, you know provincial governors acting uh, in this corrupt fashion. Um, uh, so uh, in fifty one. Aletes is dead, and he is succeeded by his uh, his two children, who are married. Again, this Ptolemaic incest uh, practice continues. Um, uh, the older and more competent of these is Cleopatra the Seventh. This is the Cleopatra, um, and she is forcibly married to her younger brother Ptolemy the Thirteenth. However, they quickly start having their own civil war, and indeed. Um, uh, by, by 47, our, uh, our, uh, Ptolemy the 13th is in Alexandria, and Cleopatra is out in the countryside with her own forces. And this civil war between these two sibling spouses um, now intersects with a grander Roman civil war that is raging. So uh, uh, in 49, Julius Caesar has crossed the Rubicon uh, with his army and confronted the uh, uh, basically to confront his enemy, Pompey the Great, who now claims to be the commander-in-chief of Republican forces. Um, in, in 48, um, uh, Caesar defeats Pompey at the Battle of Pharsalus, 
um, a devastating defeat that forces Pompey to flee, and Pompey flees to Egypt, um, presumably because Egypt is the last big ally that, that has money and resources and manpower that, that Pompey is hoping maybe he can use to mobilize uh, in a last-ditch fight against Caesar. Um, however, the um, advisors to Ptolemy the Thirteenth um, have Pompey killed as he's coming ashore um, in Egypt. They kill him, they cut off his head, and when Caesar arrives in hot pursuit, and Caesar only, he's, he's going so fast he only has a few hundred troops with him, um, uh, they present the head of Pompey the Great to Julius Caesar, um, who supposedly weeps, um, uh, as he and Pompey had at one point been friends and allies, um, and uh, uh, even uh, 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 Pompey was uh, Caesar's son-in-law for a while. Um, so Caesar weeps seeing the head, um, uh, and uh, nonetheless he hunkers down in Alexandria and decides to become involved in this civil war. Supposedly while he's in the palace of Alexandria, which of course technically is where Ptolemy the Thirteenth is there too, um, Cleopatra has herself smuggled in, rolled up in a rug, basically to ask Caesar for his support. Um, uh, and uh, at some point, they initiate a sexual relationship as well. Um, uh, and um, suffice it to say, Caesar uh, uses his troops uh, to support Cleopatra, but he doesn't have that many. He's only brought, like, it's like less than a thousand troops. Um, and actually, for a while, Caesar and Cleopatra are besieged in the palace. Alexander III is actually, he withdraws. And so there's this kind of um, low-grade war um, that ends when reinforcements uh, sent by Caesar's uh, allies um, uh, arrive. Um, and uh, finally, a more proper battle is fought on the Nile. Ptolemy XIII is killed, and Caesar therefore successfully establishes Cleopatra as the unquestioned ruler of Egypt. Um, and she marries, at Caesar's request, request, her youngest brother, Ptolemy XIV, uh, probably a purely ceremonial marriage. Um, she has a child with Caesar, however, um, whose name is Caesarion. Um, and here we've actually entered into an odd moment. I mean, one, it, it's actually totally normal amongst the Hellenistic kings that they marry into each other's families. Seleucids marry into the Ptolemies, the Antigonids and Seleucids are... are uh, uh, intermarried, uh, you know, that and actually can make things kind of confusing because they're fighting one another, but you know, they're they're cousins and uncles and brothers-in-law and things like that. Um, one thing about the Romans up till now is in the Roman Republic, uh, the Roman senatorial aristocracy is endogamous. They do not engage in kind of foreign policy marriages, um, and in this way, they're different even from say the the British aristocracy of the 18th and, and 19th and early 20th century. Um, you know, you don't get a Downton Abbey situation where uh, so-and-so is marrying an American for uh, the money. Um, uh, so uh, Romans, Roman senators are endogamous. They, they do not uh, pursue marriage alliances. But um, it's notable that the Ptolemies, who have this critical alliance with Rome, have, seem to be interested in a while about the prospect of marrying into a powerful Roman family. Supposedly a Ptolemy, but maybe it's Ptolemy VIII, um, uh, requests... Uh, to marry uh, the daughter of the great Roman conqueror Scipio Africanus, um, Cornelia, um, uh, uh, at least uh, his son's claim, uh, her, sorry, her son's claim that she has a marriage proposal um, and rejects it. But the, there was a Ptolemaic king uh, who, who thought that would be a good idea to form such an alliance with Rome. Um, and so in some ways, Cleopatra is successfully doing the same thing. And the fact that Caesar, who has a wife, uh, a good Roman wife and a lawful Roman marriage, is Having this sexual relationship that produces a child uh, with a queen probably also suggests that he's increasingly thinking of himself not just as a Roman senator, but um, as a monarch in equal standing. I, this, isn't, this isn't just a fling um, on, on Caesar's part, um, although they probably are attracted to each other. Um, that being said, Caesar has a civil war to fight, and he leaves. Um, uh, he is then killed in the Ides of March in 44 BC. Um, in a new Roman civil war, actually around this time, it's quite likely that Cleopatra then liquidates her younger brother, who is just this nobody. Um, uh, so uh, uh, that being said, a new Roman civil war breaks out shortly thereafter as the um, a group of men who claim to be the successors of Caesar, his uh, uh, great nephew and adopted son Octavian, 
um, as well as his close lieutenant in life, Mark Antony, and a, a third guy, uh, Lepidus. They form a triumvirate in Rome, a military junta in Rome, um, and uh, engage in another civil war against uh, a group of men who are basically two of the two of the men who had arranged Caesar's death, Brutus and Cassius, um, uh, whom they defeat at the Battle of Philippi in 42 BC. Um, and Mark Antony, after this big battle, Mark Antony is, is his task is to sort of rearrange things in the east. And so among he meets uh, Cleopatra at Tarsus in 41, um, uh, uh, and they seem to initiate a sexual relationship as well. Um, for Cleopatra, clearly she seems to think that, uh, uh, she's also actually breaking out of this sort of Ptolemaic in, endogamous, in, or sorry, you know, in, incest. She clearly seems to think the future is marrying into a, or not, well, having a relationship with a powerful Roman dynast. As you know, this is not a legal Roman marriage, uh, at least from the Italian, you know, from the perspective of Roman law. Um, uh, although uh, Cleopatra will have multiple children with Mark Antony. Um, now, uh, Mark Antony um, uh, also has a wife, a Roman wife, who happens to be Octavian's sister, um, uh, Octavia. Um, and uh, this is a potential uh, bit of tension, supposedly, um, uh, in, in uh, Octavian and Mark Antony are writing letters, and, and some of these letters may survive, and Antony seems to suggest that this is just a thing on the side, but uh, c clearly having children with a Hellenistic queen is, is not a ca casual flick, right? She's not a, a flute girl. Um, and indeed, you know, here we, we it's hard to engage in the history of emotion, but um, uh, having children and, and a, a pretty prominent relationship with Cleopatra is politically disastrous for Mark Antony. Um, and so the fact that he keeps up with it may mean that, you know, he's in love. Um, who knows? Um, it also may mean that he also thinks of himself increasingly less as a Roman senator and general and more as a kind of Hellenistic king. Um, now, one thing that actually really drives, you know, the, the relationship starts in 41 between Antony and Cleopatra, but um, one thing that really drives Antony uh, closely with Cleopatra is his own defeats in 36 BC. He attempts a campaign against the Parthians, that group of, uh, you know, that, 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 a uh, group of nomads that had settled into the Seleucid Empire in the 240s, um, had been given sort of semi-autonomy by Antiochus the Great, and then subsequently in the 140s expand into their own empire at the expense of basically most of the Seleucid Empire. Um, uh, Mark Antony now wants to try to defeat them basically as a way of accruing military glory, um, but his Parthian campaign is a disaster. He suffers heavy losses and a kind of Napoleon from Moscow style retreat in the winter. A number of the legionary eagles, the standards of the Roman legion are lost, which is just humiliating. Um, and now Antony's out of men and money. And so he needs Cleopatra even more because now she can provide him, you know, he needs the money in particular to finance uh, uh, his ability to uh, rebuild his army. Um, and uh, therefore, in 34, a very odd spectacle takes place in Alexandria, the so-called Donations of Alexandria, in which um, uh, there's a huge festival. Um, uh, Antony is, appears both as sort of Dionysus and, and Osiris, the Egyptian god. Cleopatra is presented as, uh, as Isis, the Egyptian goddess. Um, and their children, the children that they've had together, are assigned territories, um, all of which are part of the Roman Empire, part, all of which are Roman provinces that are being governed by Roman governors and, and in some instances occupied with Roman armies, and yet in the ceremony they are proclaimed the kingdoms of the children of Antony and Cleopatra. Um, this ceremony is puzzling, suffice to say. Word gets back and it it's allows Octavian, who the split between Antony, is, Antony, Antony and Octavian is now pretty clear, it allows uh, Octavian to ultimately uh, start rallying uh, the rest of Rome uh, towards the civil war with Antony. Um, it may be that this is des uh, designed entirely for an Alexandrian audience um, and, and it should be understood as such, not really giving these kids land, but um, uh, sort of, you know, it, it, marking them out as, an, as, as uh, you know, important aspects of the dynasty um, and celebrating the, the alliance 
if you marriage, if you want to call it that, between Antony and Cleopatra. Um, suffice it to say, at least from the Roman perspective, when the, when this gets back to to the, to the Romans, uh, it's a huge misfire um, uh, and is is uh, seen as a black mark against Antony. Um, in thirty three, really the next year, shortly afterwards, uh, uh, war officially breaks out between Antony and uh, and Octavian. Um, and Cleopatra, prov you know, provides troops and especially ships uh, to this war effort. Um, uh, the final battle, however, which involves Antony's large army and combined fleet of Antony and Cleopatra outside of a uh, Actium, um, ultimately is a great victory for Octavian and his admiral Agrippa. Um, uh, uh, the Fortunately, for such a momentous battle that completely reshapes the world, we don't have a great literary description. Um, uh, it seems that Cleopatra may break off sooner, trying to run through the, the Roman brigade uh, blockade, and sorry, run through the Oct Octavian's blockade. Um, uh, Antony seems to fight a little longer with his wing and then retreats uh, when it becomes clear he can't win. But, uh, you know, uh, for, for such a decisive battle, we wish we knew much more of the military details. And indeed, the, the details seem to be deliberately made vague to just emphasize the cowardice and, and, and sort of fecklessness of, of Cleopatra especially. Um, so both Antony and Cleopatra uh, uh, retreat back to Egypt, which, and which Octavian invades the next year with a superior force. Um, Antony kills himself to prevent uh, capture. Um, Cleopatra is captured and presumably fears that she will be taken back by Octavian and paraded in his triumph, a big Roman victory parade through the streets of Rome where uh, prisoners and particularly uh, captive monarchs are put on display. She doesn't seem to want that. Um, and so she also commits suicide, maybe by having an asp, a poisonous snake smuggled in to uh, bite her. Um, so with the death of Cleopatra the, the seventh, who, I mean, really does come across as one of the most uh, enterprising and savvy of the late Ptolemies, and certainly the most famous because of the, you know, the grand romance of her relations with, with Caesar and, and, and Mark Antony, um, the Ptolemaic dynasty comes to an end. Ta uh, Egypt is now a Roman province. Um, and that means that now all of the great Hellenistic kingdoms are, are, are Roman provinces, Seleucid Syria, Ptolemaic Egypt, um, Antigone and Macedonia. Um, and so the Hellenistic world really, as a political entity, has come to an end. Um, although, you know, people still live there, um, those cities are still there, and uh, there will be a great deal of continuity as these communities uh, simply continue to exist and often flourish as part of the Roman Empire. And for that story, uh, you'll have to take uh, a History 364 um, next semester, um, which will we'll deal with, the, the, with that story. Um, all right, I may do a, one or two more lectures just on a couple of, of topics, big topics, uh, thinking about the whole of Hellenistic history. Um, but obviously, next week is a short week. We have Thanksgiving. Um, and then I'll put out some guidance for the, the final exam. I know you're working hard on your final paper. Um, so we'll talk more soon.